الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله We know that our divine purpose is to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. This is the purpose of creation. قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون. I've not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. أحبت في الله. We realize, I hope, this divine purpose of why we've been created. This is Tawheed al-Ibad. That is Tawheed al-Ibad, meaning the monotheism, the, that all worship belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Every act of worship belongs to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. I want to talk about something a little bit different, though, with regards to this concept. And that it will be Idnillah Ta'ala aid us in our ibadah. It will aid us in our ibadah. The snow is getting very deep, by the way. Alhamdulillah. And. What I wanted to talk about is that although that's our divine purpose, and we see many athar of the Salaf that talk about the negative of the dunya, and the traps of the dunya, and the deception of the dunya, and many ahadith of the Messenger wasallam. And, and first and foremost, ayat in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would show us that we should not prefer the dunya of this over, over the next life. Wa'athar al hayat to dunya. Do not prefer, do not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making them of the people who prefer this life to the, to the next. They busy themselves with kufr, with, with sinfulness, or even just things that are, in, that are generally permissible over at the expense of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, al ayat the dunya And we know from many ahadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For example, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna dunya halawata khadira. Verily, the dunya, this life, is like a beautiful garden. Isn't this like a beautiful garden? Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah al In the dunya halawa to khadira. Verily, this life is like a beautiful garden. It's just beautiful and green. The Prophet ﷺ said, And verily Allah establishes you in that, meaning in that dunya. And He looks to see what you will do. Meaning He looks to see how you're going to behave with all this, with all this beauty. Are you using it to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the wealth that you gain, the factories that you help build and, and engineer? And participate in the programs that you do. Is it to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are you doing with that? In a dunya halawa to khadr, when Allah mustakhlifukum fi, verily Allah establishes you in the earth. He establishes you in this dunya. For the under okay for ta'amalu, He looks to see what you're doing. He, he looks to see what you'll do. How are you going to operate with all this? Are you going to use it for destructive purpose and, and means? Are you going to use it? To worship Allah Tabaraka Ta'ala and reflect upon his signs. Ayatihi Koniya. Upon his 
his signs in the dunya, in this worldly life, this his created signs. The reason I'm mentioning that is to share something that we often overlook that will help us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is Ayu al Muhabba. Is that that does not require that we remain miserable. That we have no goals. That we have no aspirations. Bil aks. It's actually the opposite of that. And that the believer should not be a person of depression and a person of always looking to the negative and a person who never envisions khair. And a person who just exists without any goals, any aspirations. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah But rather, the believer, he or she, should be should be positive and have goals. And why do I say that, Ahabat Because when you have goals and aspirations, you have direction. And this will help you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you just get up for prayer, you're doing the, the wajibat. You're doing those acts of ibadah. But it's much more difficult to be consistent if you do not have goals and aspirations. You don't have any goals in your worship or even in the dunya. There's nothing wrong with aspiring in the dunya. And I am a person who's fascinated by the various stories of people and how they gain success. Do you think that the wealthy people, except for those who were just given wealth, but those wealthy people, for example, no matter what your thought and opinion of the individuals are, or is, that... They aspired, and there's some, some, some things we can learn from them. For example, people like the founder of Microsoft, the founder of Amazon, or I also like to look at how sports and entertainers, how they got to the top. How do the MMA fighters go to the ring and battle like warriors? How do they do that? And especially the best of them, what is their mindset? And how do they view success? And how do they view the steps to get to the steps of success? That's what I'm talking about, Habitibillah. And we can take an Ibra, a lesson in that. If we want to, for example, memorize the Quran, then you have to put the Quran in front of you. And you have to put your time, your energy, and your effort in learning the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you want to learn and memorize something from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, then you've got to put the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in front of you. You've got to try to achieve that. It's not going to come by saying, oh, I wish I was a talib al-ilm, but I'm going to still just watch all these movies. I'm going to keep up on all the latest films, all the latest sports activities, all the latest this, all the latest that. But then you want to gain knowledge of the sunnah. They just don't, it's incompatible. And it's not the means to success. It's not the means to attaining that success. And that success for you, for that person, was to do talab al-ilm. And to gain knowledge of the religion. So I say this, Ahabat Fillah, to say because many of our youth, some of them it seems to me that they think misery is the way to the sunnah. Meaning that, you know, just staying in a state of poverty. We accept the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we should strive to better ourselves. If you're homeless, if you're struggling from home to home, if you don't have a job, 
and you're a young man and you want to get married, you've got to fight to attain that. And that goes back to Tawakkal Allah Azza wa Jal. How? Because Tawakkal Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, Ahabatifillah, as we mentioned, as some of the Salaf defined it, it is Ittimad Allah wa Fi'l Asbab. It is Ittimad Allah wa Fi'l Asbab. It is putting your effort. In trying to achieve whatever you're trying to achieve, if you want to be an engineer, you want to, or you want to get married, you want to have children, you want this, you want that, it's making effort, legitimate effort, legitimate steps to attain that, and then putting your trust with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, putting your heart with Allah. So that means you did everything you could to gain that success. And that's an ingredient that even those people who disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are successful in the dunya, that's a trait that they have. They fight for it. They do the extra. They go the extra mile. And they don't give up when they fail. So that's advice to myself and my brothers and sisters that you're going to fail. But if you use those, fail, those failures as obstacles to climb over, you're going to get it. Let me give you an example in my own life. One of the things I was vigilant about, I didn't necessarily attain a high level of knowledge and that was because of my own weakness my own shortcomings my own sins my own uh, shortcomings but one of the things after the first time I left to go seek knowledge the first time I left I didn't know anything about the path of knowledge I had a piece of paper I went to Abu Muslim's community which was a well-known community back then which introduced a lot of people to the sunnah regardless of the Hezbiya and other things that took place, but it gave us an introduction to thinking about who scholars were and thinking about Talib al-Ilm in that path. I went there, and when I left there, I received basically a piece of paper to get in contact with someone in Yemen. I had a one-way ticket, I had a passport, and I went. And I could speak, I could uh, read and write a little bit of Arabic. I didn't know nothing. I didn't know anything. And I arrived in Sana'a, the capital city of Yemen, and it was like a taxi stand, their airport. And people were walking around with imamas and jambias, and outside with Kalashnikovs. A very strange thing coming from Seattle, Washington, to that environment. And all the things and all the stories we could relate to you about Yemen. But my point is, is even I went... I didn't know how to seek knowledge. So I gained very little bit, but at least I, I met an Imam of the Sunnah, Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi. Rahmatullah And that inspired me. And then I left. I stayed at that time only a year in Yemen. Then I had to go back to the state. I ran out of, out of money, states, I ran out of money. And then, but I, I was determined. I was like, I bought a lot of books. I can't read them. I only had enough, a little bit of Arabic I attained. I, I raised my Arabic, but I was forgetting. I needed to get back. So I went again to Yemen. And I kept going. And then I got the opportunity to go to Saudi Arabia. And I kept studying. No one could give me anything. I didn't have a scholarship. I couldn't go to the universities and stuff. But I in, in, took every opportunity I could. Sitting with the ulama. Sitting in uh, halaqat. Sitting in the, the various programs that I was able to participate in alhamd. that's because I wanted it and so if you want something you've got to fight to get it and even if you have an obstacle and you don't get it at one point according to your time schedule then keep striving and get it the next time and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ikhlas with thabat bless us to be ahla istiqama forgive us of our many sins and our shortcomings bless us with ilm al-nafi wa rizqan tayyib wa amal al وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم